Hello. Welcome back to Ark Knights. Um, I'm still feeling a little off, unfortunately, so my voice might be a little weird in this video. Uh, I don't really have much to do other than just read the event, because it is the last day for it, and I don't know where this will go once it's gone, so I'm just going to read it real quick to make sure that I get it done. The last thing we did was this dude got off the bus and was going to marry some lady, and then her... We found out more about her backstory, Savage, and Amiya's backstory, and like the place that she lives. So with this one, we're gonna learn more about Ray, hopefully, because she's still kind of an anomaly. Uh. The curtains in the shack are slightly shorter than the windows. Before the start, before the furnaces heat up, and the machines start to turn, and the city itself awakens. The first pinpricks of dawn, dawn light prod at anyone still asleep, and yet. I've never fixed those curtains. In a daze, still foggy from sleep, those rays show me a momentary trick of the light, an immense shadow. Head still whirling, caught right up to the point where my sleep-addled brain doesn't know what I, who I even am. The light gets me up. I ought to tidy up my things and head out already. Laborers scurry about, rushing to the mines before they even open, all so that they can get the, the, good, the good jobs before they're gone. Let's go, Sand Beast. Oh! Hey, not there. You forget already? That mine there already hired some safety specialists. We'll go try our luck in the northwest side today. Zoli stretches in back fin. It's back fin. It's truth. One that big must be all full grown, right? Yep. Don't often see us pit sinker Sand Beast grow that big. Your luck's not half bad. Could be. You'll need a, lo a little luck this time. If you can get down the shaft today, rules say I pay you double. Wow. Rules say I have to pay you double. You'll have to take the extra goodies out yourself, of course. All right, lead the way. Whoa, hold it. That's it? No questions asked? You don't look like a hothead, a hothead new hand. You hear double pay and sign on the dotted line? A catastrophe has torn up the land for a few hundred clicks out west the past few days. Big earthquakes. That's got the origin originium crystals in our mine shaft multiplying like mad. An absolute mess down there. You got all that? Yep, got it. You're not taking me seriously here. Awfully foolish. Or are you trying to say that you really some kind of specialist? Seen this sort of thing every day. Specialists? Wouldn't go that far. I've just spent spent a few years pit sinking. I'll play it safe. If I die, there'd be no one to take care of my sand beast. Ah, uh, should have figured. A safety specialist wouldn't go about looking for work in the first place. All right, I've said everything I need to say. Fingerless, oh, uh, fingerless Ollie, quit drinking, quit uh, get prepare, prepping. Safety ropes gotta be on her since, nice and tight before we drop her down. Okay, I ate something that's giving me bad heartburn and it's making me burp, I'm sorry. I don't know what other people think when they say mine shaft. The pounding echoes, the moist stench, the boiling hot air, the bitterness of sweat on your tongue, maybe that sort of thing. I'm a pit sinker. Every day, before the miners get to work, I go down the shaft to scout the conditions, alone. This early, the shaft's nothing but darkness. The mine cage descends, the voices up top slowly fade away, and then everything around me gets eaten up by the dark. And that's when my senses get keen. I'm no fan of the pitch black, but feeling of darkness is the one thing that's most familiar. Pit sinker. What's it like down there? Sand Beast's back fin is raised, but its veins haven't changed color. Standard response. Should be safe for the time being. Is the map current? We haven't had time to mark out the new shaft yet, but the major chambers haven't changed. Alright. Hmm? What was that? Infused Originium Slug. Handled it, but it's not a good sign. We almost never see the explodey creatures down in the mine. Things might be even worse than we expected. I gotta remind you, when you're at that depth, you move forward a little bit further and we lose signal. Yep. If something happens down here, I'll come back to report. It's getting darker. The seal on the sluice, sluice gate Holding back the water is still in decent condition, and the channel's not blocked, still operating normally. 
What else do I need to check? Originium crystal growth range and activity. The condition of the support struts, whether or not they're at a risk for collapsing. The condition of the drains, whether or not they might leak. Also the air quality, whether or not there's a change of toxic gas leak. Watch your step, sand beast. The lights down this way are broken too. I can't really see anything with only my headlamp. Sand beast, help me take a peek. Oh, he's so adorable. The ventilation shaft's been pierced by an originium crystal. Ventilation shaft? Oh. Floor is covered in fragments and the crystal surface is still thin. This one's only just emerged. But there, there is but total darkness. Looks like there's a huge cavities on the back of the support struts. That Were they burnt away or perhaps bored clean? It's crawling with originium slugs. But there, there's but total darkness. There's water pooling above, not yet no showing signs of seepage, but there's abnormal airflow in the water. Bubbles are coming up mighty strong, but there, there is but total darkness. Your back, back, your back fin. It's covered in originium dust. The color of the blood vessels. Toxic gas leak. We've got to go. That's cool. It's like a, a canary. The mining canaries that they'd send into the coal mines before the workers to see if it dies or not. <laughs> Getting hauled back up the, to the surface from the bottom of the mine takes yonks. I never did figure out exactly how long. Just chinning up and looking out into the distance was enough for me. I think this is when the other pit sinkers would count the rocks they managed to haul up. Didn't matter how much ore you took out, mine owners didn't really care. Only those very small, privately run mines would seek out temporary pit, pit sinkers, drilling even deeper shafts, extracting even more valuable originium ore. The bottoms of the mines are more dangerous. You're still with me, right, Sandbeast? No haul for me today. Although there might be still be infected critters about, I put away my weapon to have a free hand. Despite this, operating this loose gate one-handed is really tough. Eats up a lot of time. I do my best to run out, feeling Sandbeast's lower back fin pricking my arm. This was the first Sandbeast I bought. I remember two years back when I bought it. Shopkeep <laughs> gave me a piece of colored paper and a folded photo. He told me that the way the lantern light looks passing through the capillaries in the Sandbeast's back fin tells you, tells you the mine's air quality. It's been a pretty hard, handy detection method. This time, before I felt out of breath, I recognized the dazzling dark violet on Sandbeast's body. He told me that with a fella this sensitive, the life lost wouldn't have to be mine. Captain, raise the cage if you would. We're heading back up now, Sandbeast. I got pretty decent pay packet. Could use it to buy a new food feed they put out. We could also get see a doctor. Get to gotta keep you healthy. This oh time fuck. Uh, time was the folks in the mine wouldn't tell me if things were dangerous or ask if ask me if I really wanted to go into the pit. They could wait until I was lifted back up to the surface, watched how I breathed, look at the color of the blood on my in my nicks and scratches. As the cage rises, I can't hear Sandbeast breathing over the blowing of the wind and the rumbling machines. It isn't moving. All I can do is chin up and look out in the distance. After a while, the darkness begins to crack open just a tad. I can tell it isn't just some trick of the eye from spending too long in the dark, and it definitely isn't me hallucinating. It's daylight. You'll be alright. It feels like I've always been waiting for this moment. We're up top! Breathing in that fresh air, getting some sun, we'll be alright. Like that fantasy I've been holding on tight for. Look, it's the entrance. It comes to me that the after effects of the earthquake, earthquake catastrophes are still ongoing. What with all the dust and sand in the air? There's no daylight at the entrance. Checking on a sand beast is real simple. If the membranes on the back fin have increased blood flow, it shows that the poison's already had time to accumulate in the body. If sand beast keels over, then I'll just have to buy a new one. I've still got two sacks of feed in the house. People can't eat it. Tomorrow morning, I'm thinking of checking out a mine in another direction. Tomorrow morning, it'll be alright once daybreak comes. Where's your sand beast? Popped its socks? Well, that's no good. 
we don't have want any pit sinker who doesn't come with our own sand beast. Those things are basically born to die. If you're willing, if you're not willing to part with the money to buy a new one, you'll quickly meet your end down in the pit. And you're infected too. Whew. <laughs> Look, we can't afford that sort of hassle here. No answer? Are you deaf or something? Or are you just some fool bugger who got her sand beast killed? All right, get going. Better not see you again. Medicine for sand beasts? I don't have any. And to be honest, I've never heard of such a thing. Well, you don't always take meds for your average cold, right? There's even fewer people who would want to give them to a sand beast. Best to just buy a new one. These little fellas don't live long anyway. But I can guarantee that this lot were born real healthy. Won't die of the sickness before you get into the pit. If you're go not going to buy, best get out of the, my store then. I'll say it once more. There's no medicine for sand beasts. That's just common sense. You're going to buy a sand beast to be a pit sinker without even knowing the basics? If the sand beast dies and you don't, that's called a good day. Sand beast, I didn't... Daybreak. The dawn light weaves between the bars in the empty beast cage before it stabs her, ending a long, long nightmare. And yet, it's hardly an improvement. Never mind. Hear me out, empty cage. I didn't get it killed. I tried my best, but when you're down in the pit and runs into toxic gas, the whole point of the sand beast is to see how the air is doing. Deep in the pit, where it's always darkest, why am I shaking? That's so sad! Mate, do you know which one of these transport trucks is heading out first? You want to go see it? Yeah, I still remember where I first saw it. Just need to head back there, thereabouts to find it again. I still remember the ray of light. Other than the dark, what should I be feeling for? It, I will remember. What? It will remember? You will remember. It actually rescued me. Let me keep living on. It exists, right? Yeah, it exists. The sand beast opens its eyes. Oh, they're so cute. Wait, Sand Beast, where are you going? To find the thing you wanted to find. You can bring me there? No, it's, what? I keep hitting it too fast. No, it's no good if it's just me. But I've only got, whoa, let go. Hood, hood. Hood. <laughs> Why is it holding on to the doctor's hood so tightly? <laughs> Oh my god, that's adorable. Ray's just like, uh... Pot lid. Oh, there's another one! They're so cute. They're like weird cats. Armadillo cats? I mean, because they have a shell. Turtle cats, maybe? That's adorable. Why is holding on the doctor's hood so tightly? Atop the rock wall, among the sand dunes, streams of water flow out from the hulls all about, converging into a pool in the center. Please let go. If you don't, it's going to tear. The rock walls and stone columns come together to form a rocky barrier, blocking the oncoming sandstorms and protecting those on its leeward side. Hey, sand beast. Bet you haven't eaten one of those before. It's a radish biscuit. The general goods short storekeeper mentioned it before, and the animal almanac wrote about it too. So it's just this kind of place. A sand beast digging itself out of a small hole, two sand beasts leaning against a branch, three sand beasts soaking in the pool, no, four, five, even more than that. Their back fins are all arced, their blood vessels showing a healthy glow. This here is sourberry pie. We've got some grass pot crispy crusts too. <laughs> it looks like the sand beasts get along with me a lot better than the doctor. Amia, help me figure something out here. <laughs> I think of Potlid, you and Sora laughing a lot. Well, it's obvious, right? Hey, wait a second. You're calling me Potlid because you're trying to get back at me. You can't call me that. <laughs> Why? Why are there so many sand beasts living here? They're so cute. There's even more sand beasts jumping up here. Doctor, try not to get overwhelmed. <laughs> here, let me have a try. Oh, I knew Ray would figure it out. The way that you chased after those sand beasts just now, I told everyone you're definitely a little critter lover. Oh, just now. 
Looks like Ray didn't realize we've been following her all this way. <clears throat> we really just got off the truck for a break, waiting for the braking device to cool down, but then we saw you looking like you were in some kind of daze when you got off. You, we were worried, so sorry. Keep calm, Doctor. Try not to move too much. Wow. That was a huge sneeze. It let go. That was using a pointy leaf to poke around it in the holes on the Zambi's back to tickle it? Thanks, so I finally think straight again. Uh, so that's the Zambi's breathing holes. Um, probably this one, so I can think straight again. Oh, no. Let's do that. All right, fellas. You're all safe. Run along now. That sand beast reaction is sim pretty simple to explain. They use their back fins to support their breathing and are very sensitive to changes in airflow and temperature. These sand beasts and the ones bred in captivity are just as small. Look like cubs around three to four months old. They should grow up to be pretty chunky and live a for a decent amount of years. What about the one with you, Ray? Now that I can give you a proper look in the rays of light, your coat's a bit brighter than I thought. My mistake. Well, I have to ask, why are you following me? Oh, I wanna... Oi! I've been looking for you a lot for half the day! Why'd you all run in this way anyway? What are all these critters doing here? What are they? Sand beasts. I know they're sand beasts. These things... No, that's not important right now. Doctor, didn't you say you could actually read the data from the survey equipment atop the truck? The doohickey's pumping out fluctuating data. 99 times out of 100, whatever it says doesn't happen. And I don't understand a thing about the pattern it spits out. Everyone, get back in the truck. Eh? You're saying it could be a catastrophe? The doctor looked into it. The catastrophe messenger who was, who was on the truck with us for a little while had a very limited survey range. We can't rely on that data to provide us an accurate picture of the situation. And since the doctor's judgment says to leave as soon as possible and not try to take cover here, that means we still have time. All right, got it. Let's get moving before the catastrophe wrecks everything here. The farther, the better. Everything here? Oh, the sand beasts! Does she save them all? She better save them all. Whew. Running over to tell you a lot of the news, then running back... I gotta say, oh, I gotta say, I definitely broke the factory district record. <laughs> Potlid, did you manage to get my time? You need, you need to time your own runs, Lons. Wait for the others next time. You guys are playing with the sand beasts too long. Turned you into slow pokes. I can't, I can wait. Sure, but the catastrophe won't. Come on, be a good girl. Start up already. Doctor, Amia, you two ready? I'm all set. Eh? The doctor ran too hard. Still isn't up for talking. Right, yes, I understand. The doctor says, I'm all set too. Alright, if everyone's buckled up, off we go. Toodaloo! <laughs> Catastrophe. But where's Ray? Will we be alright going at this speed? Definitely not a problem. The only thing overtaking me now is myself. <laughs> me now is myself at top speed. A little catastrophe cloud like that? In your dreams, mate. That's good to hear, huh? Doctor, what are you trying to say? Huh? Hey, wait. Ray? That's right. Where's Ray? I don't think she's made it on. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's saving the sand beasts. Ugh. It's okay, sand beasts. We can still make it. The catastrophe isn't here yet. It's just the sandstorms picking up now. But I can still make it through the wind. I can find somewhere safe for you, fellas. Vigilantly digging into the soil. Right, I know sand beasts can't talk. It was just a hallucination or something there. Blow and whistle. Come here! Black cloud's about to hit. Won't be able to see much soon. Or I could become the somewhere safe for you lot. There's nothing else we can do. Weathered Hunter. But nothing else we can do. Even if the sandstorm's huge, all we can do is rush right through it. It's gotta be hard on that kid Rayla. Rayella. Oh. Our first time coming along and we run into a shitstorm. You lot, come le lend a hand. Lift up her legs. This little lady's whole body is burning hot, and her feet are covered in blisters too. She's far too young for this. Don't think we can she can walk for the rest of the way. Let's go. 
We better decide which way to get out of here already. Oh. I'm familiar with the sense of wariness and despair. The wind and sand press down upon me. All I see is darkness. My feet feel full of lead. The adults carried me on their backs. I could feel their flagging stride as it fought against the raging wind. No, this is a catastrophe. I remember. Alana said a catastrophe was coming. So this is originium dust and not just regular dust? It smells like the pit. The catastrophe will destroy the rock wall, pollute the pool. Those sand beasts will have nowhere to go. I won't let them suffer like that. Pulling them, carrying them, holding on to them, whistling again and again to call any other sand beasts, following along behind them at all. And then all I remember is being shaken about like a ragdoll. How many sand beasts did I manage to protect with my body? I heard a bizarre whistling sound go past my ear. Seemed like there was someone whistling for me, guiding the little critters. Huh? Eh? Rah! <laughs> They're so cute! You... Wait, wait a second, I'm on your backs? Where are y'all carrying me? They're protecting her now! Familiar with this sense of wariness and despair. Whenever the shadow of the Farron moot appeared in my memories, it was always accompanied by a vast, empty wasteland. I was with the team, fighting against the sandy squall, walking towards where the sun rose. Yellow sand filled the sky, smothering out all the color of the newborn sun. Yellow, white, yellow, white, muddled yellow, gray yellow, until it all became a deep and darkest black. In the end, we managed to make it to nightfall. Covering in covered in darkness for the f second time that day, a thick mist creeped in, and those poor sods who were injured cried out in pain. We were lost. Blood and sweat soaked into my boots, and the blisters on my feet went numb. The adults carried me and kept going forward. Smell of dust in the air, and the mist so thick that you can't see your hand in front of your face. Vague shadows in the darkness, light. Where am I? A great ca gaping cavern with bioluminescent organisms emitting light as dim as an old miner's helmet. Myriad creatures rustle about in the shadows behind Ray, making her reflexively raise her crossbow. Several small mounts on the ground scatter and bump into each other, revealing themselves to be sand beasts. Sand beasts? You fellas brought me over here? This isn't just your den, is it? group of sand beasts on the ground and atop the walls jump about, guiding her towards a path that leads deeper into the cavern. The stone pillars of the cave slant and cross over each other, protecting the glowing area in the center, like a stone nest. The stone nest built by a giant foul beast. The ground itself is folded and creased. The vestiges of the passing of some unknown creature, cutting off at the entrance of a route leading even further down. The stone beams strewn about are its shed scales. Those great piles of soil, it's rotting dander. The sounds of the howling gales outside is already cut off, leaving only a drawn out whistling to echo throughout this natural sanctuary, establishing an order for the creatures who live in the dark. I remember that time when I saw that shadow in the mist. The wind brought along a murmur. The sound soothed me, and let me forget the pain for a while. Move forwards, Rayella. Leave this darkness. You must... Eh? Why aren't you going ahead, little fellas? What's up ahead? Not wanting to deal with the darkness any more than she has to, she turns on her miner's lat. It's a closed-off cavern? Can't get in there. I could chisel it open. I need to chisel it open. Ouch! What? The whistling stops, replaced by a different sound. One whose pitch stretches from <laughs> stretches from the highest highs to the lowest lows. Countless syllables intertwine with the bellows of the beast. Ray presses down hard upon her ears, but the echoes still reverberate within her mind. I thought I was just dreaming that there was something poking away in my eyeball. 
Good grief, this place is twice as lively as it should be. Should be... be... Strange? The sand beast is speaking again. Hundreds of sand beasts speaking at the same time. Sand beast... beast... east. How could I possibly be a sand beast? <laughs> I swear. First, it's a group of little long ears clinging about with their little sticks chiseling at my brain case. Then they try to dig into my ears with little exploding iron pellets. 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 And when they finally got tired and headed off, I managed to actually get some sleep. But I barely even closed my eyes before you came along and woke me up again. 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 It's the Farron Moot. Mm. Apologies, little one. I got a little bit too stirred up just now and shouted at you. I must have startled you into falling over onto your backside. But given that you were the one who woke me up with your racket and trod on top of my tongue, making my, me bellow about and make a fool of myself, I'd say we're even. Ugh. What's that smell? Why does it stink so much? What is this? Get these things away from my nose right now! A hallucination? Hallucination? I assure you, I am no hallucination. If I were, I wouldn't be feeling a little bit itchy right now. Fellas, why are you yanking those plants? Gah! Those are my nose hairs, smelly little things! Don't pull those! Ah! Achoo! <laughs> the rock wall... The rock wall splits open. The darkness once more beginning to crack open. That's so cool. That's its eyeball. Holy crap. She's like not even half like. Oh. Uh -huh. Farron Moot? Are you the one I've been looking for? The giant eye shines like a great gemstone. Ray has never felt her heart beat this strongly before. Something about inside her chest. A hunter's daughter, a pit sinker who broke free of the darkness, a traveler who chased the light. From then until now, every instance of her reaches out of ha out a hand towards the giant eye. What? Farinmoot? You mean me? Well, I quite like the sound of that name. A much mightier name than Sand Beast. I'll have to remember that one. I don't remember who decided to give me a name last time. But after waking from my nap, I find that I've completely forgotten it all. I swear it was just a moment or two ago. Ah, forget it. Sleep's more important. Gotta hurry. Say, little one, why did you come looking for me? You saved me. Did I? A sound that's been echoing from deep in my mind. An immense shadow. A light. It was a miracle. You saved my life, along with many others. I remember your light. I've always thought it was something right out of a legend, that the thing that saved us was some giant friendly beast who lived out in the wilderness. I checked so many animal almanacs, and none of them ever mentioned a creature large enough to cast a shadow in my memory, or one that could talk to people. All I know is, you are definitely not a hallucination. I just felt that I had to come to find you. This is so cool. I'm sorry, little one, but I'll have to stop you there. As you can see, I have no way of moving my body. Even when those little sand beasts were jumping about in my nostrils with their horrendously noxious <laughs> stench, I had no means of removing them. I am trapped in darkness, bound for decades, perhaps centuries. So how, I ask, could I have saved you and the other little ones, as according to you? But if not you, then who? Maybe there's another foreign moot out there in the wilderness. I regret to tell you, little one, that there are no more of my kin out there. Though what little I know about these wild lands, that I am that much I am sure of. Take heart, little one. Do not be so down. If it truly vexes you, perhaps you will feel better if you closed your eyes and took a little nap. Ah, perhaps not, for closing your eyes means being in the dark, and you have a look about you that says that you fear it. All right. I admit I'm not used to consoling people. Well, that's enough out of you. I'm feeling sleepy again. You'd best be on your way now, and make sure to take those smelly little things with you. 
In the blink of the eye of an eye, the sand beasts beside her are in an uproar, becoming coming together to create a bizarre sound once more. Ahead of Ray stands a muddled darkness, so dark that she's unable to tell which way the sand beasts are carrying her. All she feels is that she's getting further and further from the light. Suddenly, from the cavern that quickly fades into the distance, the Fire and Moot's voice rings out once more. Don't mind me, little one. I might not be able to move my body, but that doesn't mean I can't budge a bit. Since you took so much effort to come all this way, I have one more question for you. If I am the Fire and Moot, if I'm, I am the light that you were seeking, the roiling sand sound of landslides washes over her, and the earth trembles as if shaken awake by the jab of the pit sinker's crossbow bolts. Considering how far you've had to come to get here, what exactly were you hoping I could help you with? I need to read the next part right now. No, fuck, that's the wrong one. Ah, my mouse didn't work for a second. My mouse was it turned off because I didn't move my hand enough. Where's my mouse? What does Ray want? Doctor, I'm not afraid anymore. They asked me a lot of questions and I told them everything. Our long journey, the places we've been, and whether we had fun or not. But there are a few questions I found no answers to. Is the doctor looking for something? Why do they all say behind our backs that the things that the doctor wants to see can't ever be seen again? Why did the doctor save me and travel with me? Oh, is that a Mia? Oh, ladies in here. All drivers, ears both long and short, up. This is guidance for our departure in six hours. Watch the catastrophe, for the catastrophe forecasts and drive safe. Don't chase wildlife. Let's get the trucks in and get home early. Well, you don't look so bad, old bones. You should be thankful your last trip is with me. Others probably wouldn't have take have what it takes to fix you up. You'd have to sit out here in the boonies and tatters with that hole the anti-armor blew open and wait for the engineering team to come take you apart and haul you any usable modules back to the factory for reassembly. And me? I wouldn't be able to hand in the truck. The whole thing would have been a bust. Everyone would be making fun of me for that for the rest of my life. Should have been made fun of for the rest of my life if someone found I was hiding underneath the truck when she was killed. Ugh. That kind of thing's not ever gonna happen again. All right, just one more problem then. I don't have too many mates in Iron Carrot City. I need to find someone to teach me how to write the accident report. Oh, is this the past then? Oh, I stop ringing the bell. This truck's not going anywhere. You got the wrong. It's Potlid. Coward. Oh no, it's it's Jerry. Wait, what? Okay. Uh, <laughs> looks like I got the right one. The gaudy decorations are all gone, and I don't. It doesn't look like the war broke out in here anymore. It feels a bit strange, actually. Anyway, it's good seeing this thing in one piece. This means that Ray and Warmy are both fine, right? Huh, <laughs> suppose so. Th then let me ask one more thing. Did Ray find the thing she was looking for? Of course not. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to bring up painful memories like that. Don't worry about it. It's not really painful for me at all. That said, the hijacker doesn't think it's all that painful for her either. Come to think of it, this really doesn't make any bloody sense. She disappeared halfway through the trip for no reason, then she showed up where we pulled over to wait for a small catastrophe to pass. She's just like a dumb foul beast who finds herself disoriented after getting carried a thousand miles away by a catastrophe wind. That's hilarious. Uh, then she didn't possibly forget that what she's looking for, right? I, I know there are folks who would run in circles as a kind of contest, and there was this lad who got so dizzy that he fell and knocked his brains out. We might have a uh, worse case on our hands. She told me she met a fire and moot. Uh, she said it's not the one that she's looking for. Huh? Finally, she even said the fire moot that's already told her the things that she's looking for doesn't exist. I, I feel kind of sorry for her. Really now? I call that finally seeing things clearly. But after that, we did keep heading to the Grinning Valley. We went through all the trouble to make our way there. No way I was going to turn back on our hijacking. And how was it? So cool. Too bad it's pretty dangerous there. A coward like you? 
you won't be seeing it in your lifetime. <laughs> uh, really, I don't suggest you go. If it wasn't for my techniques and quick reflexes, the Ute would be stuck in the valley. On our way, on our journey back, we had to stop every two hours for the old bones to cool down. The Union says it's about time to get it standardized, and well, they have a point. Ah, uh, it's been 20 years. You've been driving for 20 years? I never would have guessed. Well, thanks for the vote of confidence in my skills. But I was going to say, I've known this old girl for 20 years. Right. Coward, where's my invitation to your wedding? Huh? Uh, um, you, you might have missed the wedding. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm on my honeymoon. And, well, that's over now, as of 10 minutes ago. Iron Curt City was going to be our final stop. But I saw your transport when we got to the gates, and all of a sudden, I started to think I wanted the trip to last a little longer. Oh, are you two driving that trunkle trucky parked not too far up ahead? Here I thought the driver got the wrong on the wrong level instead of logistics channel for their delivery. Something's off though. <laughs> We're driving a delivery truck, all right. Well, actually, we found her truck when we left the gateway that day. We were thinking of turning back to, on, to our engagement ceremony, then somehow we drove to the registration center instead. Then we drove to the open plaza, had our ceremony, and went on our honeymoon. Bugger me dead, now I remember. <laughs> what is it? The girl <laughs> that followed you everywhere. Now I remember where I saw her face. It's the logo on this truck, this face. I know there was a hardware store that sold old safety valves. Oh right, she was trying to make herself disappear. Do you even know why we had to stop every now and then? Uh, I'm really sorry. Let me apologize sincerely on her behalf. I'm just kidding. I can't really blame you for this one. This truck should have been upgraded a long time ago. That being said, if we get this last part installed right now, I can get away with a few dozen fewer sentences on the report. Quick, do you have any of the valves in stock in your transport? Wormy, is it ready yet? It's still sparking. I'll learn how to use it in a bit. Give me... Oh, sorry, my nose is too... I can't do a voice, a high-pitched voice right now. Give me a little more time. Once I learn how to use the staff, I'll come to, out of the room. If you really ha can't figure out how to use it, you're free to ask that old caster there again. But I learned so fast, both when Lons taught me how to fix cars and when Daddy taught me how to cook. All right. I thought you'd follow Alana to get the truck returned. I couldn't. Didn't you say you had to finish some other work by noon today to get on that big mining ship of yours? Uh, I could have then taken my bike, and I could have given you two a ride to the next stop, too. Thanks, Savage, but I had to leave at some point. Whoa. Oh. Whoa, why did you lean on the door? Well, simply put, as a security officer, you sometimes gotta block the door and scare people. I got used to doing it. Uh, why is the breezy so, is the breeze so warm? <laughs> I'm starting to get a handle upon how to use the staff. Oh, da, 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 da. You really figured it out? That's incredible. But let's put an end to our little sh to your little show here. If you keep heating the air, I'm going to catch fire. <laughs> Did she say I'm gonna catch fire? That's good. Let's sit here and wait for Alana. Once she's back. I'll take you to the I'll take you two to the Rhodes Island land ship and see what they can do for about your oropathy. Alright. Oh. It feels so familiar sitting on the seat, waiting for somebody. The benches in the waiting area are made of steel. They're so cold, and I couldn't get them warm no matter what. If only I knew how to use arts before, I could have warmed the benches without anyone knowing, and Daddy's bones wouldn't have hurt so much. Oh. You got the chance for me. You still have a lot of time to learn how to use your staff before you find your dad. By then, you'll be able to control your power how you want it. Really? But Ray didn't find the Ferun moot in the end, and we didn't really make it to the Grinning Valley. But I've been waiting for Daddy for so long. After everything, I should... This trip was so, so long. Woo! Finally made it! I really gotta hand it to that coward. He's really got a knack for writing reports. Why? That staff is so pretty. Really got to hand it to me. Oh, she made it for her. How is it, Potlid? You all ready? Lens, take a look at this. Here. Okay. Uh, did it get a little oranger? <laughs> Orange? 
Uh, this is way too hot all of a sudden. Savage, is it really okay for her to use arts like that? Hmm? Yeah, it's fine. Well, all right then. <laughs> I've been... <laughs> I've had my eyes on the staff for a long time. It's just Green's Billy Industrial Aesthetic. I knew it'd be great fit for Potlid. How's that? Now, bring on the praises. You're so amazing, Lon. So amazing. It's just, even if I got it for you a long time ago, we don't, we didn't have anyone around to teach you how to use it. Besides, I couldn't just put the transport truck down for our delivery address, right? Now then, let's get you treated. When you see your old man again, we'll let him see a real healthy pot lid with incredible arts. Lons, I... I... Oh. Oh, why are you... Alright, let it out. Just grab my clothes and cry. I don't mind. It's so sweet! I love this! At the very least, you didn't end this journey empty-handed. I love it. Verify the pre-departure <clears throat> supplies order. Get the originium, originium fuel item deleted. We have more than enough fuel reserves. Hell, we have so much that they could come spilling out of the tank. What about these orders for individual operators? Who commissioned a messenger to send all these carrots again? I've had it <laughs> with that sweet smell in the kitchen. I can't take it anymore. This creates the refined solvent that engineering ordered. This one is the materials for the experiment closure is putting together for a new line of business. Hello, Amiya. Hello, Doctor. This one... Huh? Amiya? Doctor? What are you doing here? Oh, I'm sorry. Are we interrupting, are we interrupting the procurement department's work? No, it's fine. It's just... If you're really... If you're here for the view, I think you'll have a better time up on the dock. It's pretty noisy here at the logistics channel. Oh, actually... We've kind of got used to noisy environments lately. This noise here actually feels more comfortable. Doctor, let's head further inside. How did your checkup go, Amiya? Don't worry, no changes in my vitals. After all, we kept our distance from the active originium clusters, and we had effective protective measures. But I'd be lying to say if I wasn't terrified to see active originium glowing or growing and fragmenting the earth in front of me. It's very rimbatabilitant to name the place the Grinning Valley. <laughs> but when I hear that name now, I don't think I can smile anymore. But maybe when everyone gave it the name Grinning Valley, it was just a natural valley that wasn't yet covered in active originium. Ray was so sure that she had been there when she was young, after all. But over these ten years, the originium, they're rapidly prolifer proliferated and made the area unrecognizable. Not even Ray could identify it. Do you think it's a shame? Are you scared? Um, she's probably scared, so let's not figure out more. Do you think it's a shame? Yeah, we actually didn't, we didn't actually make it to the Grinning Valley. All we do is look at it from afar. Before we had to turn back, it feels, feels kind of like getting ready for a picnic only for it to rain that day. That's fair. <laughs> Don't laugh, doctor. Oh, right, doctor. Do you think that the pheromone that Ray was looking for really exists? As far as I knew, as far as I know, pheromones do exist. There's a reason she managed to escape that minor catastrophe. Yeah, that's good then. Although we didn't make it to our destination, Ray wasn't just suffering a nightmare. Doctor, here's your order. My order? I don't remember placing an order through Rhodes Island lately. My order? Oh, it's a surprise I ordered for you, Doctor. So heavy! Oh, it's a small vivarium. When I walked by the market that day, it suddenly occurred to me that you seemed very interested in Billy Fauna all those years ago. When you brought me back to the land ship and turned to look at the wilderness, you seemed very lonely. I was still small, but I could tell that it was just loneliness. So I thought I wanted to miniature miniaturize and save everything there is in Rim Billiton as a snapshot for you. At the very least, back then, I thought you felt lonely because the land ship was a bit empty. Perhaps having some living things around would make you happier. Of course, Rhodes Island has a botanical garden now, and our databases have a sizable collection of ecological files, so the small vivarium... Vivarium? Viv vivarium <laughs> Might not be all that useful to you anymore. But I still wanted to fulfill the wish I had as a kid. Oh, thanks, Amiya. The way I was then, is it more or less the way you are now? Huh? 
pr pretty different. I'm not lonely at all. It's just after we got back here, I suddenly started to feel sad. We have to get back to preparing for our mission to Victoria. Combat, healing, disaster prevention, and saving lives. Many elite operators have matters to settle, and Dr. Kaltza forbade me from using that title to refer to myself. There's something someone once told me. This path isn't one to reach the end by oneself, and it's not trodden for an outcome for an answer or an answer. I'm here. Um, it's not like you to be so pessimistic. Well, I am here. Well, please don't worry, Doctor. I'm fine. Ugh, I'm not trying to act sentimental. But maybe it's precisely because this path doesn't have an end that we sometimes want to take somebody's hand or reach our hand out to somebody else. As such, life is finite, and life goes on. Come, Doctor. Let me help you get your vivarium to your office. I've had enough time to put your my feelings in order. Right now, there are still a lot of things I need to figure out and learn. Also, we just had a new operator pass her assessment. I want to go congratulate her. Based on her question for me, though, Rhodes Island doesn't actually need a pit sinker. Oh, Yeah, because Ray ends up joining. Oh, the Sand Beast! Sniffs. The critter staring at the, vivari the vivarium. Is that Ray's Sand Beast? Yep, the one she's holding on to since that catastrophe. Hold on. The must beast the must beast in the vivarium. Isn't that what sand beasts like to eat? Come back, sand beast. No eating the doctor's things. Hello, Amia. Doctor. Hello, Ray. I heard your assessment went very well. Congratulations. Thank you. I am Rhodes Island's ID badge now. I have a Rhodes Island ID badge now. And there's a number on it. Yes, Ray. Are you worried about something? No. When the miners went into the shafts, they were all wearing ID badges. That way, if somebody didn't come back, it's easy to figure out who. But pit sinkers are temporary workers. We don't get ID numbers or badges. I like this badge very much. Thanks. Uh, no need to thank us. It's what a corporation should do. Besides, if it pleases you, Rhodes Island can be your home from here on out. You see Ray lift her head and stare at Amia all of a sudden. Just like the stare that Amia felt a few days ago, when you two walked by her on the street. Right. Ray, why did you suddenly want to come to Rhodes Island? To be a pit sinker? You helped Potlid. I thought I should have helped her too. I can't forget what happened that day, no matter what. And also, I want an answer. When the Fern Moot woke up from its centuries-long sleep and asked me what exactly I wanted, all I asked was for him to send me and the Sand Beasts to a safe place. At that moment, I felt no regrets about anything. As if... Being able to see it was more than enough, but I still want to know why I so longed for that light at the time. What exactly is it to me? At the time? Ray, you mean... Ray, are you asking me? Why? You quickly realize that Ray is not looking at Amiya. Not at all. The Fire and Moot. My hallucination over ten years ago. I saw it in the Grinning Valley. At the time, I was with the team of hunters. There was a sandstorm. It was dark and we got lost. I was still pretty short, so I could only see the people around me and their hunting crossbows. After some time, I couldn't walk anymore, and I couldn't see anything clearly. In the end, all I remember seeing was a huge shadow, and a ray of pure white light. It was narrow, but it penetrated the sands. I heard a gentle whisper that drowned the howling wood winds. All of a sudden, I wasn't afraid anymore. Maybe it was just a dream that I had. The only thing I remember after it was waking up in a tent I'd never seen before. But even if it was just a dream, I want to see the hallucination that has been with me this whole time. Amia? Amia? Doctor, I... Ray is gone. Sorry, just now I... I saw it. You saw what? I saw a Rhodes Island that was freshly dug out and covered by a canvas. So a large shadow moved slowly through originium covered wilderness and rim billetin. The Sarka's engineering team all had their faces covered to conceal their identities. Their vehicles was loaded with cannons while architectural arts forged blades. The sandstorm was fierce and the road ahead was stark. A long convoy followed Rhodes Island tracks and marched onwards. 
This is going to be a long, long road, but to save everyone from their hardships and to prevent even crueler future, this is our greatest hope. In the sands, the engineering team and lo a local team of hunters walked past each other. I saw her helping the trapped hunters, even though they were complete strangers. Hold on, Amiya. Whose eyes did you see all that through? Because I think it would be so nice if everyone could make it back to their home. Right, Amiya. This land ship has its own name. What's more, there's someone here who knows the meaning that was bestowed upon this Rhodes Island when it was given this name. Have you asked the doctor? No, it's not because you're young that the doctor didn't explain it to you. The doctor simply thought it should be us and those who came after us to define what kind of ship Rhodes Island is. It's fine if the old definition gets left behind in the past. At the very least, I think that line of thinking can at least partially be found in the doctor's silence. Because that's also how the doctor sees the doctor. Knowledge cannot define the doctor. The doctor thinks the doctor <laughs> knows nothing. Memories cannot define the doctor either. The doctor's memories could never again be found across these lands. Mia, do you trust the doctor? Right, I do too. And one of the reasons I chose to trust the doctor is because the doctor reached his, a handout to you back then. War, perseverance, civilization, hope, the extraordinarily long stretch of time, and the burning stars, and the faded future. There are many, many thoughts so heavy they are unrecognizable within the doctor's mind. But the doctor made a very simple wish. The very first coordinates that the doctor picked out was his vast loneliness. Amiya, this is your home. Perhaps one day, it will be you who will decide what Rhodes Island means. Right. It's only natural to feel scared. Ah, this may be very hard, but I really do hope that you won't fear giving the wrong response. Don't be afraid. The idealistic past is, path is unending. That's why it can't be walked all the way to the end by any one person. No matter when, no matter why, if you're scared, you just need to find the people you can trust and take their hands. Huh? You're scared already? In that case, you can take my hand right now. Until that day. Doctor, can I do this? Do you trust me? Wow. So, the Farron moot that she saw was not, it was Rhodes Island when it was being excavated. And when Rey was a child, she saw it while it was still being freshly excavated and the engineers helped Rey's people, the hunters, escape the sandstorm and, the, and survive. It's cute that she ended up joining Rhodes Island too. Same with Potlid and Olan. Which means she might be a character that comes out eventually. I'm happy for him. He got married. And Savage is a operator already too, but it's cool that she got some backstory with being able to look into where her past is. And then Amiya finding out more about how she met the doctor and what the doctor's relationship means to her. Because, like, they're, they're basically, like, child and father. And it's really cool to see all of that. That was crazy. I will say, the best artwork in this entire thing was the Farron Mutai. That was so beautiful. And then, like, Ray standing next to it being so small. That was crazy. And it was cute to see Ray care for something. Because, like, she's so monotone and lifeless. And then, like... It was sad that her sand beast died, her first pet died, and so she got sad. But then she ended up with more sand beasts in the end, so she's happier again. Ugh. This this one was so nice. And so wholesome, but also so crazy. I loved it. This was so much fun. That was Arc Knights to the Grinning Valley. Um, I had a lot of fun reading through these though. I that's all I can really say, though. It was just so much fun. I hope that you enjoyed it, too, of course. Um, <laughs> I will show you guys. I never did these because uh, the only reason I would is for this. And that's it. That's it for me, though. So 
you like this video, like and subscribe. I love having you guys around. I'm loving this series so much, and thank you for the feedback on the Minecraft series. On Wednesday, I will post the first video of it. I will be using a mod pack, fuck, what's it called? Chaos Awakened or something like that? I don't know. Um, I will also say, eventually Minecrafts will be moved to Tuesday, and I will add another series on Thursdays. Um, my plan for Ark Nights in the future will be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Tuesdays will be Minecraft for now, and then Thursdays will be a different game. Because I need to split up this game more for my own sanity. I will also not post on the weekends anymore. Main reason I started to do that was so I could get a lot of the early content for this game out fast as possible, so that, I mean, so I can progress. Because Doctor, I'm you recording- you know your schedule is today, yes? Recording every single chapter, I do it in one video, so I can get more and more content through, so I can progress the game more. And that's one of the major reasons why I did a video every day, but it's not realistic for me, and especially soon, I'm, I hope I can get a job, because I, I'm lined up to get an interview, but we'll see what happens. Other than that though, join the Discord. Uh, you get to talk to me directly there, and eventually when I find the other game to put on Thursdays, and then I'll move, once I find the other game, I'll move it from Wednesdays to Thursday or Tuesdays, the uh, Minecraft series, and then Thursdays will be the other game. And once I find that other game, that'll happen. But for now, it'll just be Minecraft Wednesday, and Ark Nights every other time. <laughs> but yeah, for the Discord. Join it. Tell me what your thoughts are on the on the Grinning Valley. That was a lot of fun to read. It was so wholesome and sad at the same time. I wanted to cry at one point. And if you want to support the channel, go Sweet. over to my Ko-Fi and buy me a no coffee. I'd appreciate it a lot. Um, that's it for me though. So, you better have a good night. And bye bye.